Hello, 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 hello. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all. Um, yes, Najan Wash is back again. How are you guys doing today? Yes, yes, this is uh, another session for you guys. I can see you guys are already joining us. Uh, Joy P, good evening to you. Hello, Sir Francis, good evening to you. Mom Diaspora, good evening to you. Thank you guys for joining us. Yes, we have some important people that's going to be joining us this evening as we are going to talk about the issue that concerns our states, uh, those states and uh, other topics as well. So you guys are allowed to leave a comment in the comment section where we can throw these uh, uh, questions to our guests to answer it. So I'm going to bring our guests in right now so that they can join us. We take it from there. Right, um, I have uh, Mr. Osayende Onyedigin right here with us. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, yeah, good evening to you, good evening to you. And I have Mr. Osaze Obaseki right here with us. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can, thank you. Yeah, good evening to you, good evening to you. Uh, we are waiting for Mr. Michael Ode. As uh, we can see that he's trying to be on the backstage right now, but he's, uh, I think his internet is not uh, responding well. So uh, meanwhile, um, we here now, I want us to introduce ourselves. We are going to start from Mr. Alex Oneodegin, Osayende Oneodegin, to introduce himself and why we are here. Mr. Oneodegin, are you there? Um, yes, I can hear you clearly. Uh, my name is um, so, Ostayende Oniedigin. Um, okay. I'm from a uh, local government uh, in Nigeria, uh, in those states. Um, I'm a full-time member of a uh, BACO uh, community. That is a Bini Artifact uh, Repatriation Organization. Um, I think I'm here um, in light of uh, the challenges we are facing in a, a dual state community uh, when it comes Good. to uh, the impact of the invasion uh, of uh, 1897. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Osayende Oniedigin, for joining us on this show. Uh, we are going to ask Mr. Osaze Obaseki of Seven Gear, please introduce yourself to our audience to know who you are and why you are here today, sir. Okay, uh, 
My name is Osaze Obaseki Osemege. Uh, I'm in Nigeria. Uh, I'm a trainer, a consultant. I specialize in online training. I'm also the uh, secretary, organizing secretary of BAPCO, just like uh, as earlier mentioned by Mr. Edigi. And um, I know we are here to talk about the invasion of uh, 1897 and the effect it has, it has on the Benin. Uh, nation or the Benin, or Benin people as uh, so to say and um, uh, especially on the mental health as the case may be which we are going to be talking about today so basically we'll be doing justice to that and i'm here to do that too thank you thank you very much thank you very much mr osaze obaseki i appreciate your time with us this evening um, we, I guess we have Mr. Michael Ode here, but we can't see his face. Mr. Michael Ode, can you hear us? Mr. Michael Ode, are you there? Okay. I think Mr. Michael Ode needs to come back or we can't, uh, see him yet. We, I think he's struggling with, um, with his internet or network or whatever. So, but meanwhile, we are going to um, kick start while we wait for Mr. Michael to rejoin us again on this show. You know, uh, yes, Mr. Alex Osayende uh, Oni Edigin and uh, Mr. Osaze Obaseki Osayende, I'm really pleased to have you guys here today on Niger Watch. Uh, we are going to be talking about the issue that is going on right now that is affecting the Edo community all over the world and uh, talking about the invasion 1897 as well and the impact he has played on Edo people you know so that is why we are here my audience you guys are here watching us please uh we want you guys to share so that we can uh, you know uh, do this all together whereas we can see that mr michael there is still struggling to join us you know he's right here but uh Fortunately, the picture is not showing yet, but I just want to see if he can hear us. Um, Mr. Michael, are you there? Can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Michael? Yes. Okay. I think Mr. Michael is still struggling with his internet. I'm not sure the location where he's trying to join us from right now, you know, but um, his device is not allowing him for some reason to be part of this show for now. I just hope he can maneuver that and join us so that we can do this all together. So, um, right, um, Mr. Osayende Onir uh, it's nice to have you here, my brother. So uh, we're gonna be, I'm gonna ask, we are gonna, I think we need to, okay, yes, I think we can have Mr. Michael right now Yes, managed to join us right now. I'm going to bring him live on the screen. Yes. Mr. Michael Odeh, are you there with us? Yeah, I can hear you now and I can see now clearly. Yeah, I think it's, we are connected now. My son has just helped me out. So he's oh, done. wonderful. Good evening, sir. Please re, uh, introduce yourself to us and our audience to know what your name, where your location, and why you are here today, sir. Thank you very much. Um, my name is uh, Michael Odell Anderson, as you have rightly said, and uh, I am the president of uh, BACO, Bini Artifast uh, Repatriation Campaign Organization worldwide, and uh, I base in Hamburg, uh, Germany. That is my uh, location. Uh, so, and I know what we're here today to discuss issues that concern our community and the impact um the uh, uh the stolen and the, the invasion of the uh, our kingdom by the british armed forces in 18 uh, 1897 and the impact the negative impact it has uh, uh, put on our people the um, the trauma and all the negative things that it has done to our kingdom for uh, so many years and to this present day and uh, that is why uh, I'm here. Okay, wonderful, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we are going to kick start right now because we all are here. 
And uh, I don't know who I'm going to be starting with, but I'm going to start with Kusayenda um, Onedegi to uh, reintroduce both of you. Tell us um, why we are here once again. Mr. Kusayenda Onedegi, are you there with us? Yes, yes. Um, I'm here with you. Okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Naja Wash, uh, for your uh, this opportunity um, you're giving to us tonight. And um, the positive approach you are using to help a uh, Edo community, um, especially in Nigeria, uh, in diaspora. Um, thank you very much. Yes, we are here today in regard to the uh, negative uh, impacts um, we went through and we are still going through. Uh, to today, um, when we are talking about the British uh, invasion uh, in uh, 1897 uh, in the Edo State uh, in Nigeria. So um, yeah. I have with us here today uh, my president, uh, uh, Bako, and um, we also have uh, the secretary of uh, Bako organization uh, with us today. Um, basically, we're going to be focusing on um, how these things are affecting our community, the majority of our leaders, our brothers and sisters are not taking notice. And uh, because of our role in a uh, adult community, we think it's about time um, we bring this thing to book. It's affecting us when we are talking about Metal Health uh, uh, Day, Metal Health Week that we are in, uh, in Europe right now. We are talking about Black Lives Matter, Black History, so we think an um, invasion of Edo by the British um, is something we need to bring to book because it's affecting us. We want to talk about it. We want to talk about this issue. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Alex. I think I'm going to be calling you Alex. So thank you very much for joining us once again. So I'm going to pass this first question to Mr. Michael De Anderson you know, to answer this question for us. Um, Mr. Michael Ode Anderson, are you there with us? Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you, yeah. Okay, sir, I'm going to ask you, um, what do you think about the invasion uh, of Benin Kingdom? You know, like we said before, 1897. What do you think about the invasion of Benin Kingdom, sir? Yeah, um, the, the, to on our understanding, the invasion of uh, Benin Kingdom was, number one, uh, it was illegal, and um, uh, uh, it was the British trying to expand its empire, and the Benin was an empire of its own, and to the extent that Benin was functioning like a country, it was more or less a country. Yeah. Uh, Benin had its own ambassador in Portugal at the time, and our Alba at that particular time visited Portugal. And uh, Benin were the Europeans, they know they, that Benin was, existed. Even Benin City as a city was more of a beauty than many cities in Europe. So it created a lot of jealousy. And um, don't forget that it's in record that Benin. Benin City was built like a structure which still remain the biggest human made uh, 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 structure on earth in history, bigger than the wall of China, which people now relate to. So jealousy came in there, and the British wanted to take over Nigeria, and they saw that the Benin Empire was still expanding at the time, was still expanding trade wise. Benin was expanding many kingdoms like Oduduwa. Empire, all of them were shrinking, and the Benin Kingdom was expanding. And so the British now find it wise that the best way to attack, um, uh, to, to take over Nigeria is to invade Benin. So they mobilized um, other uh, tribes, smaller tribes, uh, prepared an army, and they invaded Benin. They, uh, they invade Benin, that was not enough. They destroyed the kingdom completely destroyed all this, all this structured, and at the end of the day, put this kingdom, an empire of its own, to be answerable to a government, a very strange government, that, uh, which is now Nigerian government, and make the Benin Kingdom um, uh, 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 less effective, make it um, powerless, 
And uh, presently, the new kingdom is answerable to is like answerable to Nigeria and uh, answerable to Nigeria in a very negative uh, manner, powerless. So our king at the moment is answerable to even to our own state governor. So those things is like uh, the impact is is enormous. Because enormous, because if you look at the Benin people who are supposed to be uh, prince and princess today in a state called Nigeria, we have no voice. So that is the impact. The reason why the British did it was to destroy that thing. And I'm sorry to use this word racism. Racism came in there because they were like, um, how can black people build this kind of structure if we leave it? Because if you invade the kingdom, you may have killed the people and defeat the people and take over their and take pick their king, but they, they to burn the king that kingdom down, to burn the, the, the palace down was unnecessary. So they they burn it down. That is number one. Where is it coming there? They just they don't want us to take that credit. Then number two, they were interested in the artifacts. They know fully well that these artifacts worth millions as at that time, today worth billions. So they looted these artifacts and they took it over and brought it to Britain and sent it to all part of the world and make the money. They're still making money out of it today. According to the Nigerian ambassador to uh, Germany, uh, where uh, uh, Yusuf Tuga, where, when I had a meeting with him uh, on behalf of Baco in uh, 2019, he said most of these things they invented today that relate to computer, internet, or whatever, that all these things were extracted from many artifacts. That artifacts, things that are scientific things that are artifacts represent that we, the adult people, we, the Bini people, we Nigerians, we don't know. That they exploit those things because our history were tied to Bini artifacts. We're tied to artifacts. Every king, whatever we do, what happened, event, everything we have manifested through we are recorded through Bini artifacts. So therefore, if you pick one artifact and you read it, the whole message about that particular stuff is there. So if you pick one artifact that was that was created in 400 years ago, you through that artifact, you, people were there in Bini to analyze it and they will tell you exactly what happened 400 years ago, what they are going to do. When our Oba, Ovorame was taken to Calabar, he was still communicating with the other people by sending a box, sometimes a drum. He will send it to Bini. The Bini people in, in Bini, they were able to interpret the message. But the people who brought it don't even know. But they will send a direct message to other people. Other people will read it from those things. So we lost all these things. That is why. The British came, pick all these things. They were able to read them. Remember, these people who did this thing were inspired by God because there was no university where they were graduated. There were no uh, engineers. All these things were, were natural engineers, natural scientists. So they created this thing. If you still see these things today, because I happen to see the one we met, uh, the leader of European uh, Museum here, uh, 2019, we went there in the name of Baco. Then they show us some of these artifacts there. You will be emotional because all these messages are out there. So the, that is why they invaded this thing for commercial reason, uh, for economic reason, for because of racism, which which created jealousy. So and they wanted to es expand their power in Nigeria, and that all based on economic interest anyway. So I think in my obvious, let me stop here because of. Uh, my 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 co-members are here too. So that is my own view of the whole uh, reason why they created Bini, Bini, Bini Kingdom in 1897. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate your analysis. Thank you. We're going to move on to uh, Mr. Osaze Obaseki right now. Um, Mr. Osaze Obaseki, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay, uh, once again, good evening, sir. Um, I, I guess you heard what um, uh, Mr. Michael was saying. Yes, I did. So, okay, how has this affected you as, an, uh, as a community, individual, business, or uh, a, a cultural person? Uh, okay, uh, 
I don't need to repeat all he he has just said. He has said it yeah. all. Uh, so don't need to take a further historical tour that, down that lane. But uh, if I want to zero it down to myself, just uh, in line with your question, I will tell you that uh, the damage is uh, far beyond what you can quantify. Uh, the damage is both psychological, spiritual, economic, political, and from all angles, the damage is just deep down. Now, let me give you a very good example. Um, as a person today, I call myself a Nigerian. But the question is that I'm a Benin first before a Nigerian. But you see, that makes you even less important in the Nigerian society once you say you are a Benin first before a Nigerian, before you, you say you are a Nigerian. But the moment you say you are a Nigerian first, you lose your identity, you are absorbed, you dissolve into the society, even in a society that unfortunately is not egalitarian. Uh, people, there, there are those that are more equal than others. Uh, you discover that um, you are nowhere to be found as a Benin person. Now, yeah. it doesn't just end there. Uh, religiously, if you put it that angle, put it, put it from that angle too, you also discover that we are nowhere. Uh, it's 20 hours. Yeah. You, we, we are nowhere because you still discover that we serve a God we don't understand. Yeah. I've, I, I've had the opportunity of staying with some of my uncles and um, senior bro, uh, cousins and that, and I see the way they pray. And I later, later discover that these people are actually not really serving the devil. They're actually praying to the same God we pray to as Christians. So why were we told that these people are all serving the devil? I, start, I started asking questions, and I discovered that there was a replacement of the people's form of worship. And the people's form of worship was what connected them between the people, what connected the people between them and their maker. This time around, that has been distorted. Now, you are neither a Christian, you are neither worshiping God your traditional way, you are, which means you are not communicating to God. And unfortunately, the general whole tendency is that they've told us now that our gods we worship and whatever the, our problems in this world are actually caused by our forefathers it's on record that africans are the only people that point fingers at their forefathers for their problems why others point at the fact that they need to do more technologically to be able to advance so the british did a lot of damage to the Beninese, and just like he said before they came it was on record that every the Benin city had street lights when even cities like Lisbon and other parts of Europe, we are struggling with darkness all around. Benin City has street lights. Benin City has streets that we are paved and can be seen kilometers long enough. You can stand at one end of the street and, and see kilometers ahead of you, very, very straight. Like the, 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 so the, street, the roads you have in Benin are Papava, Mishoro. Those roads are not modern roads. They were, they were roads that were built as far back as 14, 25, 14, 20, to tell you how far back, 400 years before the British came. So for the British to come and invade Benin and destroy Benin, it means they were doing something that was not going to end very, very soon. And as you can see from what Baku is doing, it's very clear that it's not going to end soon. Uh, let me just stop here so that I can give room to my other uh, honorable colleagues to talk. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Osaze Obaseki. I really do appreciate that. Uh, yes, we're going to bring in uh, Osayenda Onyedigin in right now. Uh, Mr. Osayenda Onyedigin, are you there with us? Yes, yes, I can hear you. All right, good. So I'm going to ask you, because you've heard them, um, you know, two, the two gentlemen, what they've been saying concerning the invasion 1897. So my question to you is that what would you say to the British community today? What advice do you have for Edo State youth and leaders? Um, thank you very much. Uh, very quickly, uh, before I uh, go directly talking about uh, my people and the, the British community, um, it is very good for us to understand that uh, we are talking about ceremonial period and how we, shall, we can actually identify uh, activity that we should be engaging with. Yesterday, during our uh, media community interaction, uh, we, we, were, we were talking about uh, 124 years as yesterday. 
uh, that this thing happened when we're talking about uh, 1897. Uh, and, yeah. and then now, when we look at the way um, they invaded uh, those states, um, our parents, our forefathers, they were armless, you know, and they were brutalized and uh, destroyed, executed them. We are talking about execution, and they cut majority of them, they cut their neck and all that. And um, when we look at the identity of a thing, this we are stolen. And today, um, when you visit the British Museum, it's not like a shop where you go, where they make money from our own identity. So um, the other way around, this has led to, when we talk about traumatic uh, uh, stress disorder, uh, when we talk about anxiety, uh, when we talk about depression, um, uh, in the life of many of our community brothers and sisters, those that their parents were actually uh, physically involved uh, in this activity. Um, because when we look at our age now, we, are, we, are, we were not actually there. Majority of us were not born then. But now, when we visit the museum, if I, if I come to the UK now, the museum, I want to check the lifestyle of the United Kingdom. So me going in there, I saw something of my identity and someone that's trying to tell me the wrong side of it. They don't know the history. They don't know who, what, what those things are. They don't know where they are coming from. So at the end of the day, this thing is affecting the children, children, children that are born today. So my, my direct conversation with um, the British community is that we are not here to engage in some form of uh, physical, radical uh, conversation like the way they did. We are putting this thing to every community to do that. Yes, it's about time they look into it that when we talk about mental health issues in our community, they should give us voice. They should allow us to have the voice. They should allow us to also express the voice um, that they did not allow our parents. Um, when, if you look at what the, uh, my president was analyzing, um, they didn't allow our parents to express their business identity, their cultural identity, their social identity, all these things were exploited and invaded in our community. So, as a British community, I'm begging every individual to join hands together to help us to use the right language so that we will be able to know the right community, the right people we can actually talk to. Now that we have Brexit and broken the euro, so UK is now on its own. So in every other part of Europe, uh, in the UK, even in Canada, in America, is something that we will expect every citizens of this nation to look into. Uh, when we are talking about the right language now, we are saying which the right departments, um, they, they need to help us out because uh, we are dying inside because of our stolen identity, our parents that they killed, some of the identity they have in their room, we are talking about uh, about Vorame. It is challenging when we get there. You are telling me that this is about Vorame's head, one of their oba. Why would you say that to me? It's not fair. When we visit the museum, we want a, a very a peaceful um, resolution where we will be able to have um, a, an opportunity to be able to get hold of this our identity back. If I tell you this is a destroy our kingdom, destroy our value, even our language. When you go to social media today, you see majority of people from Edo State, the attitude they are possessing, their behavior, their identity, some of them with naked online. This is as a result of the impact of the, the invasion of Edo State. That is why you will see Edo person is able to come and not understand what we're talking about. We, we are talking about the queen. They don't have that value anymore. Even as a wife, as a husband, they don't have it anymore in the society. So for a dog community, I'm just begging every adult leaders. We're talking about adult leaders now. If you're a community association chairman, you're a community association chairperson, 
you are a leader in any community when we are setting up charity ngo these are something we need to look into because it's killing us as a community that is why today baku any active repatriation uh, campaign organization have this opportunity and uh, we again we thank Naja wash for giving us this voice to be able to voice it out and um, this is something we are talking about now when you are able to allow people to speak their mind it helps them to actually digest a day of their life so today now i use the to thank, thank Naja you. Wash for letting us talk so, to the people of our community thank you Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Alex. I appreciate your time there with us. I'm going to go back again to uh, Sir and uh, Mr. Michael there, Andrew, uh, because uh, we are changing this topic right now. We are done with this. Um, we are twisting and diverting to other questions relating to uh, those states right now. Um, Mr. Michael, are you there, sir? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly, yeah. Okay, sir, as you can see on the screen, what can you say on the insecurity of a Doe state and what can you say about the sitting governor right now, Governor Godwin in Nogagase or Baseki? Thank you very much. Um, let me start from the governor, His Excellency, uh, Governor Nogagase or Baseki. I think um, it, has, it, has, it has managed it well so far um, because uh, the, the, he's helpless if you look at it, and he's doing his best to make sure that he will not sacrifice his people to the problem Nigeria uh, carelessly found uh, uh, herself. Um, remember, the problem of insecurity, as far as Nigeria constitution is concerned, um, is, is in the hands of the, 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 the federal government, the president of a country of Nigeria, not the, not the governor. The governor has no power authority over the police commissioner. He has no power authority over the, the army. So he, what he did was out of um, zero, uh, what will I would say, authority, he was able to create a little authority out of it. That means by creating a um, uh, vigilante system of uh, 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 security forces. And those people now, to my own record, to what I'm receiving from Edo State, they are working effectively parallel with uh, uh, the, the Nigerian police force. So the governor cannot, to the our constitution, cannot tell the commissioner, please, uh, I command, go and do this, go and do that. No, if the commissioner have the right to say no. That is not the uh, the, 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 the That is not the directive I have from Abuja. So um, what what Obaseki did is fair, and uh, handling the situation in terms of security, um, the problem Nigeria is facing today is not peculiar to Edo State alone. It's all over the country. The the full enhancement, which, which, which um, the federal government refused to, to, to declare as a terrorist organization, is terrorizing the whole country. And um, the governor is doing his best not to make a do state a, battle, a battlefield, a battleground, because we will, they once made a do state a battleground, if you go back to history, during the Civil War, they turn a do to a place where the war should start and where the war should end until Obamudia came and worked with the federal government and the battle were shifted, which me, as I'm talking to you now, I can still remember as a little boy how I suffered that war. I was young then, maybe a few, few years old, but I can still remember some of the bad memories. So Obasaki don't want that to happen. I think he has done well. Um, in general terms, what we should do as a do people, I remember one of the platform um, organized by one Mr. I don't want to call him anyway. He organized it one time, and uh, the goal was to. It was about two or three years ago. We were to to, to organize a security uh, 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 forum in a do in a do state, and the prominent people were invited. In that thing, I contributed though that did not take place again because of one thing or the other. But I, my suggestion was this. That time has not escalated to this point. But what I suggested then was, 
These herdsmen, then they were not brutal like this, but we could manage them, I said, because they themselves, they are, they are Nigerians. As at that time, because I heard now that many of them are now foreign, foreign fighters. So they were, I said, if they were Nigerians as we observed them, that we should create a platform for them to earn a living. Then we, the adult people, the host community, then we will enjoy their service and then we will live in peace with them. So my idea then was that before I left Nigeria about 30 years ago, there was a place called um, uh, Aduawa in Ikbobahi. I think most of you might have known that place. That is where cow were being slaughtered. They will bring this cow from the north, probably by marching through their route or whatever, or using uh, lorries to bring them. They slaughter them. Our local um, patronizers goes there and buy uh, meat from, for, from them and bring it to different markets. So that is how it was done. So I was suggesting we should go back to that system. Let them bring those cows there. Then the locals, that is our own people, should be, should be encouraged to go into farming for them. So this idea that a cow can just go into your farm, eat whatever you have there, they, 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 that should stop. So when they bring this food to them, they buy and feed their cows there. No, there is what we call in Germany, N for N for Praha. That is N for Praha means the, the consumers. That is the, N, that is the N for Praha. They take the price. That is how it's done in Germany. Every production you produce, you put the price on the process and the, the, the consumer, because there's always a demand, they take the price. If a cow is being sold for, for, for 40,000, by the time you buy food, then you make it 50,000, the people will still buy. Then the locals will be happy. You give them how much a kilo cost of cassava, for example. They will go into farming, bring cassava to Aduawa, sell to the Fulanis, and the Fulani feed their cows, and the, the buyer will go there and buy, and pay the Fulani, Fulani cannot pay for the local, and the local will be happy now because they have jobs. So if it is wheat, those who are farming wheat, they will farm, bring their wheat. There, there is telephone. They call them, bring their wheat. They, I'm just rushing these things now because of time. So if we are doing that, that will work. And again, and I'll say them that we put it this way, that no, no full army will be allowed to sleep in this, uh, whatever you call it, range or cantonment, whatever you might call them, that I do what they should not be allowed to sleep in there. So at uh, those states, you provide a security there. So by seven o'clock, if it is six o'clock, they are arranged, they, they close. That full army shouldn't have a colony. They should mix up like Igbos, like Yorubas in our state, rent houses with people so that they can integrate freely. So that if there is any crime, like full army kid is full army kid that we know the particular person, or the guy live in that household, if friend live in there, we will be able to contain them. Then we know where they are. So if we see anyone occupying our bush, then we have the right to support the local to go after them because they are not the Fulani we know. So for this time, we don't know them. They are in our bushes, stocking weapons. They are killing our own people. It's becoming a problem. So we, we, we short of food because our community cannot provide food, cannot produce food freely in the farm. So we can still go into this system that every Fulani that is coming to us if we see that they are not our own citizens, because we know our citizens, if they are from French-speaking people, then we, we cannot screen their passport and see how they come into our state and check if they have working permit in our country. If they don't, then we send them home. So if we took look at all these things, I think we will have peace with the Fulani because by, by saying that the Fulanis shouldn't uh, operate in our state, I think it's against our constitution because every Nigerian has the right to earn a living, to work and live in every part of uh, uh, Nigeria. So that is why Obaseki is handling, the governor is handling this thing carefully so that it will not offend the sensitivity that is on ground. That, that is my own view, that if we do this thing, we will be able to control the full and all do. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. We are going to move right now to Obaseki. Um, 
Mr. Osaze Obaseki. Uh, I'm going to, are you there? Can you hear me, please? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, sir. I can hear you. Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, what, what is your take on the newly introduced Edo State Vigilante and what, you, what impact you think they have played so far? So, um, I might not have full information about them, but from what I know so far, uh, they've been doing quite well. Uh, the semblance of uh, deterrence is better than nothing at all. And it goes to show that uh, the governor is actually working, not just working, it's also a listening governor, uh, listening to the yearning of the people. They wanted this to ensure that uh, their security is guaranteed. And so far, feelers on the ground shows that they are actually doing very, very well. But um, I would want to quickly chip in here that at initial, the Bini Kingdom or Benis or Edo people had a system that is non-existent in any other part of the world that I know. And that system is the Odeon Way system. I keep repeating that every time I want to talk about this. The Odeon Way system makes it very, very watertight, makes it creative watertight and makes it almost impossible. I mean impossible for anybody to come in and infiltrate. And how is that done? Every street in Benin has an audio way. All they just need to do is uh, uh, coordinate properly, have serious good communication network with the, the vigilantes. And you discover that there will be seamless com communication between the vigilantes and the audio way system. And uh, it just becomes a matter of minutes to pick up somebody. Now, talking about the forest, it's, it becomes very, very easy for you to isolate anybody in the forest because you don't have streets, you don't have buildings in the forest. So it's not really an issue. So if you have people in the forest, then you should ask yourself, do you have settlement in the forest? Do you want people to settle in your forest? Why do you want people to be in your forest? It's not left for the governor, it's left for the people to say, yes, they should stay in the forest. But just like Mike Anderson has said, criminality can be checked. And don't forget that when we talk about criminality, we are not just talking about headsmen alone. We have also those cultists, kidnappers, and all that. They all exist within the, 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 the people. And once the Ondeo Way system is, is reactivated and made to work, you will discover that information will be going back to the uh, control room in seconds because uh, everything will be tied to the Ondeo Way, being able to keep his own bit of his street. What it means, for instance, if you, if you stay in any street where you have an Ondeo Way, the, the landlord of that building you are renting should be able to file your data to the audio way and the audio way should be able to know about everybody on that street if possible call for meetings in times like this you can call for meetings you must identify each person face to face where do you work where are you from and all that so if there is a crime in that street then it becomes an issue for the audio way and the landlord but this time around we, we get a criminal it ends there it goes to the police station something goes on here and there is released or is executed or is tried but what happens to where he was staying? So once that is taken care of, you discover that everybody will be throwing out criminals from their from their houses. Now, for the full and heads man, it's a very tricky one, uh, tricky one because it's a double-edged sword. We have I, I I grew up in the north. I'm still in the north. I, I can tell you that I grew up with the full and I, I I keep telling people I, I I like the smell of the cow dung because they come around us most times. We are used to them, but. And I also understand that they are very nice and lovely people. But all of a sudden, what we are seeing is something different. Now, in this case, we also want to call on the governor to set up a, 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 a research team. I say set up a research team because some of us that know what to say, when we say it, you find others saying, go and sit down, you are promoting hatred, or you don't know what you are saying, or you just raising unnecessary thoughts. They should set up a, a research team of open-minded beneath or Edo people to do thorough research. Who are these Fulanese? Where are they coming from? What do they want? What is their aim? What is their plan? Then, when you start working, you know exactly what you are tackling. But for now, if you are just tackling insecurity because people are in the forest, you might be getting it wrong. Let me give you a very good example. They are coming in from Ondo now. They are coming in from the north, which is Auchi area. And they are coming in from all angles. Guess what? Down south, the only thing you have is gile gile. So, whether you like it or not, you are boxed in already. In the military term, you are under siege. 
So it's beyond just setting up vigilante. There should be intelligence. There should be research, strategy and research, so that you don't also go and end up dealing with even people that are innocent. Uh, it's a very critical thing that might not be too easy to say on air, just like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Osaze Obaseki. We appreciate that response from you. Uh, we are going to go to uh, Mr. Alex Oniedigin right now. Uh, Mr. Alex Oniedigin, are you there with us? Yeah, I'm still here. All right, good. Um, yes, this is the last question so that we can end the show. So uh, our question to you is that what is your take on courtesy and the governor Obaseki speech to accommodate Fulani Esme in Edo State? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think this is a very broad uh, uh, issue in our community. Um, as, and, uh, as Obaseki, as a governor of Edo State, I think he started, um, he started with qualitative uh, approach when it comes to when we are talking about good governors uh, in a country or a state. Um, one of those things he did was to uh, create an atmosphere of education. So if you watch him, he was very transparent, giving uh, induction to every community that gets to when we are talking about the 18 local governments in Edo. So now they all agree on the approach to start the government together on what to do. So um, bringing in the, the idea of the challenges we're having, the, so let me say social issue we are having when we are talking about courtesy now. These are something when I was growing up, they used to be something we talk about students behavior. These are student things. So what brought about community street, house to house, uh, courtesy that we are not hearing now, when you hear 12 years old, eight years old, you know, these are what the government himself also brought into the community. We're talking about the politics. So the same group of people, we are talking about the 18 local government, they also have the results, the, 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 the approach to be able to stop this thing. So now, who are courtes? Who are members of courtes in Edo? So it's just like you are telling someone who is members of this secret uh, association. We have Uboni, we have Osokbikan, we have uh, some we say uh, yes, or we say black are different, different things. So these are something the government themselves, they are aware of who they are. So when we are talking about bringing in the, the, the approach, security approach that the government used, it was the best way you can engage with community. Look at what Osasa was talking about. Now, we are talking about those who are, they say, Hode. So when I was growing up, Yanni Hode, Yanni Hode, you're talking about civil defense. It's a joy to every community that you have them. But were they scrutinized? Do you know who they are? Were they brought in because they are members of uh, the same political party in order for the uh, uh, community to plead them because they voted the government into power? So those are questions we need to uh, look into in this area. So the other way around, let's talk about the full and The same thing is still happening. When I was growing up, I grew up with Fulani Esmen. So the identity of Fulani Esmen, what some people can also look at, <laughs> the same thing, it was now the modern language they are calling Fulani Esmen. So when I was growing we are talking about Fulani, you are talking about those people who are very yani, yani for foie. they are yellow, they have a very long hair. So those are the things we are actually thinking, these are Fulani. But now they are not saying those who are melu melu, bringing in cow. They are not full and has men. I never see them as a threat to community. So let's talk about the man that comes in from America, the USA that was killed by kidnapper. We had a source from the security and the media that uh, it was killed by his family member. So I will advise the, the community, both the government, those who are supporting Obaseki, who want a transparent government, the way Obaseki is doing it, they should be able to find a bucket of information of what is happening. These are Fulani, this is their leader, these are who get them gone, this is the owner of this cow that they are wearing. Those things are not there. It is what the media are giving us, we are all about. So resolving the Fulani Esme is only one source. 
like what I said, Obaseki started with educating community. So it's about educating people who are full and enhancement. What would they want? Because if you are telling them not to stay in Edo State, I think that is very wrong. It's just like you are telling a, a Nigerian man, a Nigerian man in the UK not to stay in the UK. Or because of one Nigerian person is misbehaving in China, then the whole Nigeria should be uh, sentenced to death. It doesn't work that so way. Are you saying are you saying that the governor is right to say that he's gonna accommodate all the Fulani Esme in every uh communities in those states? Look, look, let me just make this clear. When we are talking about the president of Nigeria, the governor of Edo State, they have the same job when it comes to the right of citizens of Nigeria. So if I, I spend my time in Onisha Creek Road in, uh, in, in Nigeria, in, a, uh, in a, uh, Onisha, you can't tell me because um, another Nigerian person do something that the governor of Onisha should just kick me away from Onisha. It doesn't happen that way. When I was in Portacop, my one, I also spent my time in Portacop, I spent two years in Portacop, my one, I was involved in many activities there. Because one So you mean, you mean that is, the governor should accommodate them? He should accommodate every citizen. It's not, it's, it's not in his right to okay. exit any citizen from any community okay. in Nigeria. Before we, bring, before we bring Mr. Michael into this debate, I'm going to uh, ask you, Mr. Alex, are you aware that these same Fulani Esme are killing our people currently in Edo State? Even today, they killed some people in some communities in Edo State. So you because expected because many states, many states are currently uh, pursuing them away from their state. So you agree that Governor Obaseki Nogega said to accommodate Fulani Esme where you know that they are they are raping our mothers, they are killing our fathers in the farm, they are killing more people, there are lots of evidence that they are doing this. So you are saying that because they are citizens, they should be accommodated. Is that what you're saying? Let me, let me, let me quickly correct that part. I've been campaigning against the atrocity and the negative impact of uh, the word full and yes men in uh, those states. I made lots of videos. I think your network is can hear you. Um, I've been campaigning against it. Um, can you hear me now? We can't hear you. Your network is uh, is not right. Can you hear me now? Hello? Uh, can you um, hear me now? It's still not stable. It's not stable. It's not stable at all. I think it's wobbling a little bit. I don't know. My okay internet. all right uh we're gonna come back to you well what did you say is it is it okay now it's still not okay it's wavering so we are coming back to you again um let's see okay, okay now. yeah it's better now it's better now my question to oh, you oh, before the network was yes. Yes, you have I was saying. I've been, I've been campaigning against the Fulani atrocity and all that in Nigeria. I made lots of videos regarding it. What I'm saying is that um, Obaseki is responsible when we talk about security and welfare of Edo people. So the same thing applies to anybody in Edo state. So if they have evidence that Fulani is the problem, yeah, they should get rid of Fulani. Okay. I think, you know what I mean? I think we are no having problem. a network problem right now. Okay, Mr. Alex, hold on, hold on. We are going to get back to you. Don't worry. Uh, let us have uh, Mr. Michael. Uh, hello, sir. Mr. Michael, there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, let me chip in here for I know what Atlas is trying to say. Um, because this is a very sensitive uh, thing. We don't want to play into the sensitivity of our own people. We know uh, those people are very angry. And they have the reason to be angry. Even me that is talking here, I've, re I've received a lot of report from my own, own village. And people are... I think, um, okay, Mr. Alex, I think we're going to talk to you. I don't know what happened. We lost... Um, Mr. Alex, are you there? Okay, we are beginning to have some issue right now, especially when we are talking about a very uh, tough topic here. Um, 
All right, let me see if Mr. Saze Obaseki, are you there with me? <laughs> I don't know what's going on right now, man. Can, hello, guys. Can you guys hear me on the comment section? If you can hear me clearly, please let me know so that hello. I can know where this fault is coming from. Just type, yes, you can hear me. Can you guys hear me on the comment session? Hello? Okay, hello, is anybody- I can, I can hear you, can, can you, you hear me now? Hear me in the can you hear me now? Can you, can you hear me? I don't know, the network, uh, none of the network is- oh. Okay. Uh, um, I think Mr. Sazer Obaseki also need to come back because you are frozen right now. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. You are not moving. I can't see you moving on your camera. Uh, really? Please come back again. All right, Mr. Alex, are you there? All right, guys. Uh, I don't know what happened. Everybody there. Um... Hello, Mr. Michael, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm back now. I'm okay. Uh, yes, thank God. At least. Uh, okay, you wanted to contribute over the question that I showed at uh, Mr. Alex earlier on concerning That's the uh, speech of the governor where he said he's going to accommodate the full and AS men because all of them are the citizens of Edo State or Nigeria at large. So what yeah. can you say about that? Yeah, um, what I was trying to say, I was trying to say that, um, contribute, just chipping for what Alex was saying, that we should be very, very mindful at this particular time because our people are very angry and they have every reason to be angry. Um, yeah. What Alex was trying to say, if I understood him, was that um, the killings, the Fulani, that are being attributed to the Fulanis, yes, Fulani are very active. Our people are not lying. But if you see some of the video that we are receiving, there are some of our elements that are operating now freely under the name of the Fulanis. So um, if we want to really go after the Fulanis, we have to be careful to make sure we really identify um, the real Fulani because you're not going to tell me that uh, till now in the whole South where the Three criminal element that was kidnapping people were actually from some certain part of the south. They are, no, they are no longer there. They are there. A lot of them are killing our people, hiding under the name of the Fulanese. Let's say the way it is. So it is the issue. The, that is what Alex is trying to say. We shouldn't just be saying, uh, 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 Fulani, 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 Fulani. What happened to our kidnappers? What happened to our arm robbers? What happened to our rapists? They are there. So we have to identify these people as well so that we will not be chasing shadow, so that we will not be pre preparing for a war that will not come. Okay, that is aside. In terms of uh, Obaseki saying that he uh, will accommodate Fulanis, I think we are misunderstanding that man. We are misquoting him. What he said was that he is going to make sure that the community, the farmers and the Fulani, that there is an atmosphere, the good Fulanis, is not saying, I will accommodate Fulani. I received a report from him, from his own work, where he said about three days ago that I will not see their do land to any human being. So we shouldn't drive it to that level that he, he will accommodate Fulani. If Fulani is a Nigerian and he's, he's bringing his cow there and he's it's not killing people. It's not causing trouble. Why not? Because we need the meat as well. If we stop eating the meat, then the Pulani will go. No business, no market. So if there is no consumer, then there should be no product. So the Fulanis are operating because we are consuming their products. So since we are uh, 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 consuming their product, we should assist them to produce products. So what we, are, what we should do, in my own view, is... 
Just like Osaze was saying before, we have a John Wade system. He analyzed it from the city. I will analyze our John Wade functions from the village because I was born in the village. I left village after I finished primary school. So if we empower the governor, empower this, this audience with race, they will be able to identify which and which is not in their community. Then we will be able to know where the Fulani are active, then how we can go after them to clean them up from our village. Then they, the, the villagers will be, they, they will be able to uh, tell us that these are our locals who are doing this in the name of Fulani, because you're not going to tell me that our locals are not committing this crime as well, especially the south-south neighbors that are in our place. We, I know how many armed robbers, we, if we kill 10 armed robbers in Benin, in, when I was in Benin, if we kill 10 armed robbers, you will be happy if you if you, if you get Benin, three, four, 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 five that are Benin. The rest, the remaining place, the many people, we know where they are from. And 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 this man they arrested, who is who who was the Nigerian most notorious uh, uh, kidnapper, uh, uh, Evans, started his operation in Benin. Was that full any has man? So we should be very careful in handling this thing. I'm not afraid of maybe the backlash for the Fulani because they themselves they should they should talk to their people because these Fulani has men, they are poor, you know. These cows are not owned by them. The guns they have is owned by people on the top. So these people should know that Benin's are angry. And two people are angry, don't want them. And then we are we are support our governor. We are if we push our governor to say, oh, I don't want Fulani, we are making him to break the oath he sworn because he's operating under Nigeria constitution, which allowed every Nigerian to operate and do business in every part of the world. So that is my view. We should be very careful to work with the governor not to push us too hard, my friend. Yes, yes, like the governor said, he said, and I quote, he said, after meeting with the Ansa community in Edo State, I promise to ensure the safety and security of all residents, irrespective of tribes, religion, and political affiliation. That's correct. It's, it's a, yes. That is, it, that, is, that is the constitution, and that is the oath he took. It is the right yes. of uh, Baseki as a governor to protect every citizen, law-abiding citizen, not criminals, law-abiding citizen, whether you are Hausa, whether you are Igbo, whether you are Yoruba, whether you are Thief, whether you are Edo, whether you are Insa, it is the right of Obaseki to protect everybody. Now I'm in Germany here now, I'm in Hamburg. It is the, it is the, the right, the constitutional right of the governor, Shensha, whether it's what we call our governor here, to protect me. If I have an issue here, when I when my sister children got killed here, I just called them here. Hamburg assisted me throughout. That is how Hamburg government know me here. So me and my wife, it is their right, my friend. They wouldn't say because I'm a black man from Nigeria, they are not going to help me. No, it's not done. Obaseki cannot say, okay. oh, because Fulani are killing people, I'm not going to take care of them. It is his right to take care of but put it right. The legitimate law abiding citizen. That is what he means. I'm not here to defend okay. him. I'm just saying things the way they, it should be. All right. Um, now that Edo people, I'm going to go back to Mr. Alex again. Uh, thank you, sir, Mr. Michael. We are rounding up you. now. I'm just going to give everybody one, one minute to, to round up. But let me quickly talk to Mr. Alex. Uh, Mr. Alex, are you there with me? Yeah, I'm still here, sir. Okay, now that Edo people have uh, vowed to take laws into their hands, since the Edo state government are not there to assist them or protect them, they want to take laws into their hands. Whenever they caught any full and man committing any atrocity, any killings and stuff like that, they are going to burn them to life. So what can you say about that? Um, I'm very strict when it comes to media or uh, distance information. Um, like um, uh, as I was saying, Apart from encouraging just one minute, research, please. One minute. Apart from encouraging the research community, we should also encourage the, a standardized uh, approach when it comes to checking the standard of everything, what the community should do, what they shouldn't do. Um, yes, a lot of people are dying, but we still have the right not only to protect ourselves, but to protect our neighbor. We are talking about civil rights. So what they are doing in terms of fighting back full of the, if they see anybody who is harmed, abusing them, they have the right to fight back. 
just like any other okay, person. Good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Alex. I'm going to go back to Mr. Osaze Obaseki, Osengie, and um, only for one minute. Uh, Mr. Osaze Obaseki, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can hear you. Okay. Okay, sir. I just wanted to use one minute to talk to adult people in diaspora, as we have about 150 people listening to you right now. Uh, one minute to talk to them, advise them, and tell them what you think they should expect from this uh, sitting governor, Governor Godwin Obaseki in Norway, Yeah, uh, uh, lucky, lucky enough for us, we have a governor that is uh, very, very educated and uh, he, he thinks outside the box. So it's the first time Edo State might be having such a person apart from Bermuda. So let's seize that opportunity to work with him and then um, bring in suggestions. Uh, like I will also say, we have Baku right now. They, they can create other groups that can also go into research, research into our neighbors, why we have conflict, how we can stop some of these conflicts, bad images and things like that. Not just uh, making all manner of complaints here and there. Let's start doing research. Let's create groups, intellectual groups that can help the governor to say, okay, I want to stop uh, 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 prostitution. This group have solved the problem for me. I want to stop uh, Fulani Hesman killing. This group have already done the research and they solved the problem for me. Those are the things the governor will need from us right now because he's quite ready to do a lot for us. And I think if we do that, it will solve a lot of our problems. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Osaze. I appreciate your time with us this evening. We have come to the end of this show and uh, I hope that we are going to do more of this uh, more often because I can see on the comment section people are saying that they like what you guys are saying. They like this kind of guideline. They like this kind of topic. So they want us to come up next time so that we can talk about the things that are going on in Edo State and what is affecting us as Edo Light, both us in the diaspora and at home as well. So I want uh, 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 Mr. Michael to end the show just for one minute, you know, whatever you know that he can say. Uh, Mr. Michael, can you hear me, sir? I can hear you. Um, thank you very much for the one minute given to me. Um, I thank all my, my, my member of BACO and you, the host, as well. Thank you very much for the opportunity given to us. I'm using this opportunity to call on all Edo people worldwide. Please come and join us to fight the, 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 the struggle to bring all the Bini artifacts back home. They are our properties. Because those are the things that will give Bini people pride. At this time now, we Edo people, we need something to be happy about. While we are fighting the Fulanese, which, because Edo don't fight a lost war, we have only lost one war in history, and that is against the British. So the Fulanese, we stop them from coming to the south, from coming to the south from the beginning, and we will continue to stop them. They cannot, over, they cannot overrun us. So I praise all you guys who are fighting at home, resisting. But please, please, don't take law into your hands. Um, try to do everything under the law and let the governor say be the last. And we should respect our palace as well. So join us in Baco. You can see us in internet. You want to type Google Bini Baco or Bini Artifacts Repatriation Campaign Organization, you will see us there. So if you want to join us, call any media, you will see our telephone, call us. I have received, I'm receiving call from everywhere. We will make you join our course. It's free. And then we want everybody to contribute. Please, Edo people, wherever you are, remember Edo. Please, before I stop, we should start speaking Edo language. I'm married to a British woman. My children speak Edo language. Everybody in Benin know them. We've been on TV many times to speak when my children are speaking Edo language, white children. So please, wherever you are, speak Edo language. That is number one key to revive our pride. We are proud people. We are king's children. We are queens. We are kings. One love. Thank you, Thank you very much, Sats. And I uh, appreciate every one of you for your time with us this evening. It's just that, unfortunately, I can see on the comment session, some people are already saying that this uh, the time is too short. How come you want to end the show right <laughs> now? Uh, I'm so sorry, guys, that uh, we've been here now for one hour, 10 minutes. You know, uh, I promise next time we are going to extend it to at least one hour 30 minutes you know uh, i'm so sorry it's just our first time today so i i can see that you guys are saying oh these are the kind of intelligent people we want to listen to wow 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 thank you everyone 
for loving this gentle, this good gentleman of our Edo state. I appreciate you, sirs, for your time with us today. I'm going to say have a good evening, Mr. Michael. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, sir. I'm going to say have a good evening, uh, Mr. Osaze Obaseki. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I'm going to say have a good evening to Mr. Osayende Oni Edigin. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Thank you, Nigeria. Was God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, my lovely Nigeria Watch family, I appreciate every one of you for your time with us um, this evening. That was, uh, you know, as you can see, that topic was very interesting. This gentleman, they took their time out today to analyze the, 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 the issue that is affecting us as adult people in our state right now. They talk about the courtism. They talk about Governor Godino Baseki. They talk about the Fulani Hesman. They talk about the uh, evasion 1897. They talk about the uh, they talk about so many things and you know uh which we all are be crying for we want to hear so and i hope uh by god's grace we are going to do this once again thank you everybody and i can see on the comment section some people saying that uh the time is too short i'm sorry one hour 10 minutes i'm not sure that is too short but still i'm not going to oppose what you said we'll try our best in case this happen next time we're going to extend it to one hour 30 minutes or two hours you know, so that you guys, in fact, we are going to provide a phone number where you guys can actually contribute into the show. Thank you, everybody, and have a good evening. Remember that tomorrow is Sunday. If you cannot go to church because of the COVID-19, remember to pray in your house. God answers prayer anywhere we are. Take care, guys, and have a good evening. Remember that Nigeria Watch is here to serve you at all times. God bless you all. <laughs>